These are the biggest rock moments of Glastonbury Festival 2023. Over 200,000 people headed to Worthy Farm for the annual event and there were plenty of surprises and incredible performances across the stages. Let's begin with the Churn Ups, a mystery act on the main pyramid stage on Friday. They were quickly revealed to be none other than Foo Fighters. Opening with All My Life, the band's hour-long set saw them mix classics like Learn to Fly and My Hero with cuts from latest number one album But Here We Are, including Show Me How alongside special guest Violet Grohl. The band were watched on from side of stage by Paul McCartney, who Dave Grohl performed with at Glastonbury 2022, and members of Guns N' Roses who would go on to headline the event on Saturday, June 24th. They played an epic 25-song set full of classics, with Slash taking to social media to express his gratitude to the crowd after the event. And they closed out their set with Paradise City, featuring very special guest, Mr. Dave Grohl. Yes, he was a busy man all weekend, not just playing his own Foo set, but popping up with Guns N' Roses and also on the park stage with The Pretenders, where he played drums for the band as they also welcomed special guest Johnny Marr on the guitar. Grohl last played with the Pretenders during the Taylor Hawkins Tribute Concert at London's Wembley Stadium last year. On Sunday night, all eyes were on the pyramid stage for Elton John's last ever UK show, where he brought out a number of special guests, including Rina Sawayama and the Killers frontman Brandon Flowers. Easily pulling one of the biggest ever crowds to the pyramid stage, it was a fitting farewell for a true musical legend. And ahead of the event, Elton was praising some of the other artists that he admired across the Glastonbury lineup, including Nova Twins. In an interview with Radio 1's Clara Ampho, he said, These girls rock my world. I've had them on the Apple Music show. I've played their music. It's so wonderful what they are doing. I'm so looking forward to seeing them live. You can feel what it's going to be like. They are just, for me, phenomenal. The energy from these girls could light up Sheffield. And that energy was certainly on display during their set on the other stage on the Sunday, thrilling the crowd with tracks from their latest album, Supernova. We caught up with Amy and Georgia at Download Festival to find out a little bit about how they were preparing for their set. Glasgow's in there as well, which is always a fun time. You gotta be hyped for that one because, you know, this is the biggest rock festival right here we're at right now, but Glasgow is like its own thing. That's Glasto's a really good cool vibe. It's a beast. It's a beast. And we're on, this, we're on the uh, other stage. It's like the oh, second wow, nice. to main stage. Great. And um, yeah, we're just, things in two weeks. We're just kind of building up for Amping it, ready up. to... <laughs> Getting ready <laughs> to <laughs> attack. <laughs> No, it's but... exciting. That's really, really exciting. That's going to be a good one. Mana Skin also made their Glastonbury debut this weekend, playing to a packed tent over on the Woodsy stage and sticking around to generally enjoy their weekend, including watching Friday's headline set from Arctic Monkeys, a band that they have always cited as being a key inspiration for them. This was Arctic Monkeys' third headline set on the Pyramid stage, their first time there in 10 years playing a set mixing classics from throughout their career, as well as tracks from latest album, The Car. Other rock acts on the lineup included Pale Waves, who played a storming set on the Woodsy stage, featuring lots of tracks from their latest album, Unwanted. Royal Blood, who gave fans a preview of their new album over on the Pyramid stage on the Friday night. And The Hives, who brought their typical swagger to the other stage on the Friday, getting things off to a very good start early in the morning. Plus, ahead of the main stages on the Thursday night, Skin Dredge as part of the Earache Takeover. And when we caught up with Benji Webb, he told us a little bit about why he was so excited to return to Worthy Farm. I remember the first time I went to Glastonbury, I was selling mixed herbs on the corner, pretending it was weed. I found three, a guy came up to me and he went, hey man, here's the 300 quid I owe you. I was only about 40 and I went, oh yeah man, thanks. Put it in my pocket and I ran back to fucking Newport. <laughs> I said, just in case he was going to come back and take it off me, you know? Yeah. Glastonbury always had a, such a good meaning to me. I love Glastonbury. I'm excited about that. The absolute banter if you walked off stage and that bloke's going, and where's my 300 I quid? Can, I, well, it could be anyone, so. You never know. I've, I've opened a can of worms now, haven't I? Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, we won't, won't believe you now. It's out there that's in public. It, that's it. Finally, we have to mention Queens of the Stone Age's closing set on the other stage on the Sunday night, showcasing tracks from their latest album In Time's New Roman, which hit number two on the UK charts this week, and closing on an epic rendition of A Song for the Dead, full of plenty of circle pits in the Glastonbury crowd. Of course, away from the world of rock, there were loads of highlights across the main stages from pop artists like Lizzo, epic DJ sets from Fatboy Slim and Hot Chip, 
Lana Del Rey over on the other stage and loads loads more performances which if you are a UK viewer you can catch up with right now over on BBC iPlayer. So that's just a few of the biggest rock music moments from the weekend. What were your favourites? If you were there, let us know down in the comments below. In the meantime, I've been James Wilson-Taylor and this has been your Rock Sound News Update.